decide what type of instructions it will be. We'll be looking at different types of instructions, instructions for making a game or instructions on how to get somewhere, like directions, okay? Subheadings, okay? Uh, so a lot of instructions need you to state what equipment you'll be using and then of course how to uh, make whatever you're making, okay? Um, and then an opening sentence to encourage the readers to have a go. Okay, so that, that's to make your instructions sound a bit more exciting. Uh, a clear list of equipment, ingredients needed. Okay, I mentioned that. Simple steps for each action in the method. Uh, imperative verbs, so, or bossy verbs. This is a part of the instructions. You'll need some good verbs, which make it clear what the person has to do. Formal or impersonal tone, so formal, or informal. Uh, yeah, so make it, don't make the text too casual. Okay, make sure it's, it sounds professional. Um, bullet points, yeah, um, when I was teaching instructions, some of my pupils, they just write a massive paragraph and it's very difficult to follow instructions if you don't have bullet points. Adverbs, okay, that, that explains how the verb is done. So often they have ly on the end, like carefully, sensibly, okay, it just tells one how to do the verb. Quickly, Chronological order and adverbs of time. So these are also called connectives. So you have firstly, secondly, then next, finally. Um, technical vocab. Okay, it depends what, what the instructions are about, but you might have to use some technical words, which you probably would have to look up, or maybe you know them. Diagrams or illustrations, they help. Closing statement, which shows or describes what the reader has achieved. Okay, so that's like a conclusion. Try and, when you're doing your instruction text, try and do most of these. I understand you might not be able to do every single one. But of course, the more you do, the higher your mark would be for that piece of work. Okay, we're going to have a little look at some instruction texts here. This is just the method, okay, for how to wash a baby. Now, these are all in the wrong order. It says, dry the baby with a big towel, put the baby in the water, undress the baby, dress the baby, cover the baby's chest with talcum powder, brush the baby's hair. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? No? Okay, that's good. Now, these are all in the wrong order. Does anybody know which one would go first. Okay, you, you don't dry, undress the baby, let's see. There we go, number one. See, and it's this is uh, numbered, which I think is even better than bullet points, although you can use bullet points for the equipment. So this shows the order. What's next? Let's see, yes, put the baby in the water. And next. Dress the baby while she's in the water. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look. Dry the baby, yeah. What's next? Let's have a look. Oh no, cover the baby's chest with talcum powder. Uh, I don't know if you know what talcum powder is. You don't need it all the time, but it's just to protect the baby's skin. Okay, it's like a cream or powder. Okay, and let's have a look what the last one is. Dress the baby. And then finally, brush the baby's hair. Okay, so that makes sense, this order. I would say, I think in these instructions, there's some missing here because you don't just put the baby in the water. What else could you do? because that's not really cleaning the baby, is it? If you just drop them in the water. Exactly, yeah, I would use some soap, maybe some shampoo in his hair, okay, these kind of things. Yeah, um, so I think there's some instructions missing there. Right, and here we have like uh, the subheadings, I suppose. So uh, first of all, you need the title, what the instructions are for. So in this case, it is how to wash a baby. Equipment, a list of things you might need. So towel, talcum powder, brush, bathtub, shower head, clean clothes, lukewarm water. That means the water has, with a baby, you have to be very careful that the water's not too hot. They say what you should do is you should dip your elbow in the water just to uh, test it because your elbow is a bit more sensitive to make sure the water's not too hot. Special baby soap and baby shampoo. Yeah, you can't, you, well, you can use normal soap, but it's better to use uh, special baby soap and shampoo. And then instructions and explanation of how you will use the things, okay? Now, this is a very basic layout for the instructions. You will, of course, be doing much better instructions. Um, you'll be using time connectives. Now, we spoke briefly about this. So you'll be using words like firstly, next, secondly, after that, then, later on. Yeah? Okay? Not all of these time connectives are useful. But, uh, and finally, in the end. Yeah? Okay? You won't use time connectives for surprise, but to show the order of what you're doing. Okay? Now, for these also... Uh, so we've got these time connect, uh, connectives I've chosen. First, secondly, after that, next, okay, finally. But also, <coughs> we spoke a bit about adverbs. Here are some adverbs. Notice they all have L-Y um, on the end. So carefully, 
gently, thoroughly, completely, lightly. Okay, a lot of adverbs have ly on the end, most of them. And an adverb does exactly what it says, you add it to a verb. So, um, for example, carefully wash, gently dry. Yeah, dry, wash, they're verbs. You're adding these adverbs to make it clear how to do the verb. Okay, so don't forget time connectives and adverbs. Right, so here we have an example of how we've improved the baby instructions. First, carefully undress the baby. Secondly, test the water temperature with your elbow. If the water is not too hot, uh, uh, put the baby in the water from top to bottom. Gently rub soap all over the uh, baby's body and hair. After that, thoroughly rinse all soap. Next, completely dry the baby. Yeah, you don't leave part of the baby wet. Lightly cover the baby's chest with talcum powder. And here we have the time connectives. First, secondly, if, yeah. After that, next, now, finally. Yeah, it sounds a lot better to use different ways of starting the sentence. Um, it can sound a bit annoying if people write then, then, then each time, yeah? So try and use a different word at the start. And number it like this, okay? Like I said before, I had people writing these huge, great big paragraphs. And when you're following instructions, it's very difficult to uh, remember where you are if you don't have these numbers. If it's just in a paragraph, you can't find where you are in the text. Yeah, so that's why it's numbered. It's a lot clearer, okay? So remember that, add time connectives. That's the first, secondly, after that, next, now, finally, and add adverbs. You don't have to add an adverb in each sentence, but just some to make it clear how one should do it. Okay, um, and then here we have the final part. Okay, um, I think we'll have a look at some other instructions. I'll be sending you this, okay? So that was instructions for writing skills. Instructions for making a game. Now, some of you might want to write, it's up to you what you write instructions for, but some of you might want to do this one. Um, Let's see, it takes a few minutes to load. Okay. Um, and this is how you might do instructions for writing a game. So, uh, you need, first of all, you need the title of the game. Well, this looks like it's Snakes and Ladders. So that's the name of this game. There's other names for this game as well. Object of the game. So this is one of your subtitles. So you, you've got to say how the player will win. The object of the game is to get to the last square before the other players. This is a very small one. You only need to get up to 30. Most of them, I think, are 100 usually, but yeah. Okay, number of players. The game is best played with two to four players. I think you can have as many as you want, really, but maybe it gets a bit boring if there's too many players. Uh, equipment. So this is quite easy. A board, a dice, and a shaker or a cup, um, and a counter for each player. So a little counter to mark where you are on the board. And then here are the instructions on how to play. Each player takes it in turn to throw the dice. Now, it's actually quite difficult to write the instructions um, for a game. Uh, you need to be very clear on how the player plays it. And it's I found it quite difficult to, even though this is quite an easy game, Snakes and Ladders, there's way more complicated games. Um, and it's not that easy to explain to somebody without showing them how to play the game. But you can do your best. Yeah, I think many of you would like to write instructions on how to play a game. Um, so this one is each player takes it in turn to throw the dice. A player must throw a six before she or he can start. If a six is thrown, the player has a second throw, okay? Each player moves a counter, the number of squares shown by the number on the dice. If the counter lands on the foot of a ladder, it is moved up the ladder, but if the counter lands on the head of a snake, it has to slide down the snake. Okay, that's a simple game, okay? And if you remember before, I think many, actually all of you probably made sandwiches, okay? And you, you've already made instructions for this, so I don't think you'll be interested in doing instructions for that again, but... Um, Maybe you want to make instructions for making something else. Okay, but um, it's up to you, like I said, what you want to make your instructions for. Uh, let's have a little look at the other one. Okay, comparing instructions. Um, so we're now going to look at two sets of instructions. And we're going to look at which ones are clearer and which ones are, uh, which one is less clear. Okay. Um, so th these are instructions for making a kite. Let's have a look. Good instructions are clear and easy to follow. That's important. Tara and Jonathan made a kite. Each one wrote instructions on how to do this. Tara did hers on a word processor. Um, in other words, on the computer, she typed it out. Uh, on this slide, you can see Jonathan's instructions. So these are the instructions from Jonathan. Okay. Mrs. Lindsay had been teaching us about kites. She told us that they were invented in China more than 2,300 years ago. When our teacher asked us to design a kite that could fly, this is what we did. 
Sorry, I just realized there's some people waiting. When our teacher asked us to design a kite that could fly, this is what we did. First, we collected the materials we thought we needed. Uh, sorry. Tara brought a big plastic bag to school, and I managed to persuade my dad to let me have some masking tape that was left over from when we had to be, we had to be, I think there's a mistake there, or spraying the rusty patch on the car. I also found some bamboo canes in the garden shed, but I thought I would be good for the struts. That's the sticks in the kite. But neither Tara nor I had any string at home. So, so, there's no mistake, we will get some with our pocket money on the way home tonight. In my picture, you can see the shape you need to cut this from. The sheet of plastic. Okay, sorry. Fix the two bamboo canes from top to bottom. Tie a loop of string from one bamboo cane to the other, passing through the holes in the plastic. Okay, um, what do you think about these instructions? Any opinion? Not so good? Yeah. Okay, well, you can follow it now. Yeah? So, um, th these instructions aren't that good um, because they're all written in paragraphs. They might be interesting. Okay, there's some facts, but that's not needed for instructions. You don't need to mention about the history of kites when you're writing instructions on how to make a kite. Okay? Um, uh, and also, it's not written in bullet points. Okay, so it's not clear. I'm, I'm not quite clear on how to make it. Yeah, he, he tells a kind of story on how he made his kite, but that doesn't help me to make my kite. Yeah, there's something about plastic bag. He hasn't got a part on in his text where it has the equipment, um, and uh, there's no title. Okay, so we'll now have a look at another text about making a kite. Okay, now this I think you can see is a bit clearer, right, for instructions. It says, this is how to make a kite with six sides, okay? So, what shape is it? Is it a hexagon? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So this is what you'll need. One large plastic bin liner. That's a big uh, plastic bag that you use for bins, the big black ones. Two thin sticks. Uh, thin bamboo canes work well, okay? So these are the sticks here. See, it's quite good to have this diagram. Um, masking tape. This is the tape. Uh, a ball of string, okay, so yeah, you need to tie the string like this. Scissors, of course, for cutting the string and cutting various things. And then we have the instructions. And the instructions are numbered, so it's nice and clear. Okay, so yeah, I cut the plastic to the correct shape with the widest part about a quarter down from the top. Yeah, I won't read all the instructions, okay? But I think it's clear that this one is a lot better. Okay, so when you write your instructions, make sure they're more like this <laughs> and not so much like the one before, if I can go back. Uh, this is not the correct way to write instructions, yeah? So you need title and subheadings, so equipment, instructions, yeah? Maybe, maybe a diagram. You might not need a diagram, 